What is the most successful conspiracy in that spiritual sense in the history of mankind? Well, I would say the crucifixion of Christ. I mean, the condemning of an innocent uh, man. No. No, that wasn't a successful conspiracy because you misunderstand the crucifixion. The crucifixion was not a failure. Oh, no, 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 I, I, I get no, that. No, 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 you don't, because you just said it was a failure. The crucifixion was not the success of the conspiracy against Christ. The crucifixion was the success of God's conspiracy for the salvation of us all. Oh, nice. Okay? And, and that conspiracy continues. What's the most I stand successful? corrected, but just what, barely. No, what's the most successful conspiracy? The most successful conspiracy in the history of humankind is the conspiracy of the followers of Jesus Christ. Those who receive and act in the spirit of God that he is, living and working and okay. acting in this world. And it tr has already, not I, just in I, the United I, States, I, I, but I everywhere that, on earth, Christ has transformed. No. I thought you meant, what is the m most successful but I don't negative? Use that, but, but I was trying to redefine spirit, that's things the point, right? so that one would understand. The word conspiracy is not just negative. It simply means that which is done by people who are breathing together. You can take it to mean whispering in the background, or you can take it to mean what it does mean in a spiritual sense. Because the spirit is the breath. The spirit is the wind, as Christ says at one point. It is here and there. And to act in the spirit of, of Christ is to engage in something that's like what we talked about. Think about that day you described at the beginning. You are praying for help, and the Spirit of God is breaking my heart to help you. That is God's conspiracy. Divine conspiracy. And it cannot be resisted, and man will not triumph over it. And, and, and that's the spirit in which Christian people have acted and triumphed even in death. Because your death can be a manifestation of the spirit that inspires, that is like an explosion that then spreads it into the hearts and lives of thousands and millions. It cannot be defeated. Uh, and, and I think that if we remember that soon, we'll know what we need to do. Where do we go from here? Well, it means in what sense? I mean, spiritually, it's clear. Spiritually, we need to make God the focus, and we need to stop making money and making excuses and making survival and all this hold other on, stuff. Hold on, so, hold on a second. As a, as a Catholic, I, I have been a student, as have you, of theology and of various strains of Christianity for decades now. And when a Catholic says, put God at the center, those words mean something very different than an Anabaptist, evangelical. A, a Catholic putting God first means I apply the totality of my faith to every aspect of life, including the body politic, including my duty to my neighbor. With um, some strains of evangelical Christianity, putting God first means I forget about all those things. So, well, see, I, I, I don't, I've, I don't. When you say I, put I, God I, first, what do you mean? I, I, I mean putting God first. But I don't, I guess I don't know enough to understand what you just said. Uh, maybe there are folks who, who think that uh, it Politics is of the devil. I've no. heard that thing. I've I, heard I, that I think there are folks like that. But, but, but why on earth then did uh, the word uh, become flesh? Again, thou thinkest like a Catholic. No, no, I think, like, I think like a Christian person. It's not just the, Jesus Christ isn't just the word. He King is of the kings word, and Lord of lords. No, he is the word made flesh. So Jesus was specifically sent in order to make it clear that in this flesh we are to behave according to the Spirit of God. We are not to reject the flesh for the sake of the Spirit of God. We are to behave in the flesh for the sake of the Spirit of God, right? And so there are things that we must do in this fleshly form right, in order to accord with the Spirit of God. And if you are King David, I mean, do, 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 do folks want to deny that King David had an obligation to God to rule over his people righteously? He was in the flesh, but he had an obligation to God. And that was before Christ came in order to live, in order to die, in order to be resurrected, so he could become the indwelling principle of our flesh. See, when we accept Jesus, he becomes the indwelling principle, that's what the apostle says, of our flesh. And therefore, in acting in this flesh, uh, we act according to the mind of Christ.